I've been playing Pokemon fan games for more than 15 years on YouTube now, and in that time experienced a lot of unique stories, gameplay mechanics, and of course, lots and lots of Fakemon. But without a doubt one of the most creative, fun, and exceptional projects I've ever experienced is Pokemon Uranium. A fan game so good in fact that Pokemon shut it down. Well, technically the creators took it down themselves, but I don't blame him considering Nintendo's history with copyright. The reason I'm bringing up Uranium after all this time though is because the team that created it is working on a new project. And although the first part has been out for over a year already, I've recently had my passion for fan games refueled. Partly as a vendetta for shutting down Relic Castle, but it's made me want to double down on my support of Pokemon fan projects. But as you guys have probably noticed, I don't really do Let's Plays anymore, so I've decided to cover this and future fan games in a different way. Today, I'm excited to share with you all a Pokemon fan game I would almost call a masterpiece. And the only reason I say almost is because it's not complete yet. The game is being released in episodes, with the first containing over 10 hours of gameplay, most of which I'm going to cover in this video. In that time, I experienced tons of creatively crafted new Pokemon, never before seen regional forms, an entirely unique gimmick that takes Z-moves to the next level, and of course, absolutely stunning visuals and features that come together to make me believe this will one day become one of the greatest fan games of all time. So without further ado, let's catch them all in Pokemon Flux. Ooh. Yo! Already starting with a banger? Our story begins with a championship match, with Alistair defending his title against Guy Fieri. The reigning champ powers up something called a Flux Bracer, and gives us our first glimpse at this region's unique gimmick. But it's just a tease for now. So after a brief message from the magical text box of exposition, we get to choose our player character. Just going based off design, I kind of like this one, but I don't know, maybe this one's closer to myself. Actually, if I just put on the glasses, he just like me for real. Welcome to Altera. Tomorrow's the day you receive your starter Pokemon, but tonight, the night after the championship, tonight's the night your journey truly begins. Ooh, how ominous. Whatever could that mean? Well, it means exactly what it said, as we walk back home alongside our friends Sky and Terra. Suddenly, we hear someone cry out for help nearby, and discover the culprit are three Pokemon possessed by... K.O. Ken? Wait, that kind of looks like a Pokemon from Uranium, no? Sky refers to them as Alter Pokemon, and unfortunately we don't have any monsters of our own to defend ourselves with. Luckily, the champion appears out of nowhere, but instead of handling this predicament himself, he sees potential in our group to become trainers, and decides to give us our first Pokemon. But unlike pretty much every other Pokemon game ever, we don't get to choose our first partner here, and it's instead based off which character you picked. Sky gets Selkid, Terra gets Luna Pup, and Aster, which is the default name of the character I went with, gets Minyan. You might recognize these Pokemon from a certain other fan game, but I didn't pick up on that just yet. I'm excited to see what type this Pokemon is. I'm gonna guess Poison, just from the design. Little purple with the green glowing ears. Tanskior, yeah, that is definitely from Pokemon Uranium. And we do get the 2 on 2, or 2v1 with the champ. As expected of the tutorial fight, it's pretty much 100% scripted so we can't lose. But it does give us a chance to check out our starter. Yup, Dark and Poison type, he's so cute! I absolutely love that the sprites are animated in the black and white style too. Whoa, we got a lot of stats here, you can see the full IVs and EVs. And a new ability, Bloodlust, attacks drain HP from their target. Okay, we got a little vampire on our hands. The battle ends with Alistair showing off, or flexing, his flux move. But again, this feels like just a tease of what's to come. Sensing the bond between us and our new Pokemon, the champion decides to let us keep them. We gotta wake up early so we can get a Pokemon from Professor Re- wait, we got two starters? I'm sure the Professor will understand. Now do we get the title screen? Yup, there it is! Pokemon Flux! That legendary is looking absolutely insane! It's like a radioactive Giratina! 
The next day we wake up and realize that craziness wasn't a dream, and we really have a little globin guzzler to take care of now, who I decide to name Briar. If you know, you know. And after withdrawing some milk from our PC, we set off to the professor's lab, which just so happens to be downstairs from our own house. Very nice music so far, makes you feel right at home in this region that I've never been before, but there is a map here. Warbler Park. Ooh, the routes are massive. What the heck? The official site does state this map features less linear and more wild area-like routes, which has me pretty excited to explore the region. But first, we have to meet up with the professor down in the basement. And there he is! The three of you are here! And an especially good morning to you, Orange. I trust you're all prepared to get your first Pokemon! <laughs> Hang on just a moment. Could it be that all of you already have a Pokemon? How? After explaining last night's crazy shenanigans to the professor, he thankfully keeps his promise to give us our first Pokemon. And more like your typical adventure, this time we actually get to choose. And oh my gosh, Moz, the leaf moth Pokemon. It munches on leaves to absorb their photosynthetic properties. Well, it does have munch in the description. That almost feels like fate, but let's at least see the other options. Chicklet, the chick Pokemon, a poor flyer. It glides and hops from branch to branch to traverse the forest where it lives. I don't know how I feel about the name. It's a little too close to that one gum brand, Chicklets. Finally, we have Findolf, the dolphin Pokemon, a resilient Pokemon that thrives on both land and water. To defend itself, it sprays a forceful jet from the blowhole on its head. I've always wanted a dolphin Pokemon, and I'm still so surprised they haven't made an official one. Oh wait. <laughs> there's there's Palafin now. I still kind of like this Findolf, and I'm very curious what it would evolve into. Plus, I rarely ever pick the water type and the background's blue. I feel like all signs are pointing to Findolf, the playful Pokemon full of energy. It's dependable even when things get tough. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need that because things get tough a lot on this channel. After some thoughtful consideration, I decide to nickname our starter Echo. Again, if you know, you know. Sky chooses the starter strong against ours, which leaves Terra with Chiclet. You poor, poor girl. We then get to have our first rival battle, which thanks to us already having two Pokemon, actually turns it into a double battle. And this is when I finally realize. Wait, I feel like I've seen Selkid before too. Maybe not in Pokemon Uranium, but maybe like I've seen it on Twitter or something? Okay, maybe not quite yet, but thanks to Minion's Acid hitting both opponents super effectively, we easily manage to beat our rival and finally confirm that the Professor is in fact our dad. But only if you chose Aster at the beginning, which is pretty cool compared to official games where no matter what character you pick, your parents don't seem to change. I'm loving this intro. Sparrow Town. Yo! We have following Pokemon, of course! I say of course, but a lot of fan games don't have that, so I'm just really glad to see it in this game. One thing I'm noticing we don't have is, oh my god. Well, I was about to say running shoes, but dude! This might be one of the first fan games I've seen where you can move diagonally. After a few more minutes of marveling at movement previously unfathomable for 2D Pokemon, I decide to go exploring around town. Yo, this kid is zooming! If we don't get running shoes from this house... I don't know, man. I'm about to steal them from this kid. Oh. Okay, well, at least we get something. My search for running shoes eventually led me to our rival Sky's house, where I was pleasantly surprised to see he has two moms. Love that for them. Meanwhile, at Tara's home, I find an upbringing a bit closer to my own. If you see Tara, tell her to come visit her old grandpa now and again. That's pretty awesome too. As a kid that was basically raised by my grandparents, I can relate. But it's upstairs in Tara's room that I finally have an epiphany. Oh, look at her room too. She's got some cute little plushies. Wait, I definitely recognize that. Oh my god. I will never forget this Pokemon. Last time on Pokemon Uranium. What the frick? Holy crap! I did not expect to run into a shiny Pokemon right now. Whoa! I should have probably done this from the beginning, but I don't even know if we can catch it, so let's find out. No! No! 
Thank you for reminding me of yet another reason why I don't do Nuzlocks often. Anyway, after finally finding my way out of town, I'm once again awestruck by the wonderful music in this game. Is it just me? Or does this route theme kind of sound like Wind Waker? This trainer at the entrance isn't actually a trainer at all, but does offer us a side quest to catch a Kavami. Straight ahead, there's a roadblock, so we have no choice but to explore the rest of the route, and I decide to head up north where we find a battlefield and our actual first trainer battle. We got Bird Keeper Ava with the Hummingbird, yo! I've seen that thing too! I used it in uh, one of my thumbnails, I didn't even know it was from this game. Oh, it's normal flying! Gosh dang it! I mean, I guess I wanted to test it, but I should not be testing it right now with Briar on the brink of dying. Well, not really. We're, we're still pretty healthy. Oh, she got two Pokemon! What the frick is that? That thing's looking kind of ugly. <laughs> I feel like that's intentional, though. Like, not every Pokemon has to be cute, right? <laughs> We managed to take it down pretty easily and learn some valuable advice from a girl nearby. You might encounter different opponents at different times of day. And there's a very useful feature in this game that lets you change the time to whatever, whenever you want. Ooh, I love how the lampposts light up. And it looks like we have a double battle now. Or maybe it's just two trainers side to side. Well, I'm going to make sure to heal up before we take them on. The first trainer ends up having Kavami, which is actually the Pokemon that one dude wanted us to show him. But of course, you can't catch other trainers Pokemon. So we absolutely destroy it, as well as his baby Tanskewer. But his third Pokemon is where things get interesting. I know for sure I did not have one of these on my team, but wait, I thought her plushie was like a shiny. I think this might be a regional form instead. My guess was correct, and it's definitely not the last regional variant we'll see in this episode. As for the next trainer, he didn't really show off any more new Pokemon, nor did the youngster down the road. But as I got to exploring more of this park, I realized... Do wild Pokemon appear in the overworld? Yo, no way! Why did it have such an intense entrance though? That made it look like it was a legendary. But it is Kavami, which is actually the one that we need for that side quest. So let's go Acid, hopefully? Okay, we don't kill it. Now, Pokeball, go! I wasn't sure if this thing was a hamster or what, really, but it was giving naked mole rats, so I went with the nickname Rufus. Then proceeded to catch every other Pokemon in this little patch of grass, which included Tanoopy and... Humburb! Borb? Oh, because it's an orb? I see you guys. And being the early bird of this game, I'm sure it's going to catch just as easily as the last few have. That's right, you better stay in there. I do wonder about its evolution though, if it's going to stay flying in normal or perhaps become grass because of the color scheme. But considering its design, its roundness, I'm going to call you Orby. <laughs> Not my best nickname, I'll admit. Now let's go back and see what this guy will give us for catching Kavami. Well done, you deserve these. Oh my god, I keep thinking it's going to be running shoes, man. Where do we get the running shoes? <laughs> Wait. I was pushing the wrong button this whole time. Never have I felt so dumb playing a Pokemon game before. And trust me, I've had a lot of stupid moments. But after wandering around for a bit longer, I decided to make it daytime again to see if the Pokemon spawns would change. Yo, it's the first not new Pokemon we've seen and it's Lediba. Which does make me curious if maybe there's something new about Lediba in this game. Besides for that, I didn't find much else that we hadn't seen before. That is until I ran into this bug catcher. Ooh, we got another new one, Squirmy. That also seems oddly familiar. Then again, I might just be thinking of Orthworm. That'd be pretty sick if this is actually a pre-evolution of Orthworm. I went around exploring the rest of this route, battling every trainer I encountered, and learned another vital piece of information from another random girl on a bench. If you see a shaking patch of grass, you should investigate. Oh? Wait, right there. Yo! There are random grass encounters. Oh my god, it's Squirmy! Oh, I'm so glad I talked to all the NPCs. And after spending way too long thinking up a nickname, took us two days, but we finally made it through the park. 
It's time we had our match. He promised, remember? Ever since he battled Sky in the lab, I've been excited to test your skills myself. Terra's test ends up being an easy A, but at least I finally realized. Luna Pup is also from Pokemon Uranium. Why is it now all of a sudden coming back to me? I'm pretty sure I had a Selkit on my team. Did I have a Luna Pup on my team too? I most definitely did not. Maybe all the years are finally catching up to me, but you know who's not catching up is Terra as she gets absolutely wiped. And we get to move on to Condor City. I love that the cities get their own little intro. Yo, this music's a bop. What do you mean? You don't hear anything? Oh my God. The NPC is not lying as the background beats carried me away to every nook and cranny of this massive city. Seriously, you could even explore multiple apartment buildings, each with rooms full of NPCs to chat with. Unfortunately, most of them weren't exactly helpful and I soon forgot where it is we're supposed to even go. So I continued to wander the metropolis in hopes that one of these people would point me in the right direction. Until eventually... Have we been down this way? I don't think so. Oh, finally! Thank goodness. I knew you wouldn't take... <laughs> Good thing NPCs have no notion of time. This fancy looking building behind us is the Altera Pokemon League headquarters. And in order to become real trainers, we need to register inside. If I had a nickel for every time I ran into the champion, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? We walk in on the champion having a serious talk with the Pokemon League's director, basically saying he's done and refuses to compete in the next Pokemon League tournament, instead passing the torch on to the next generation of trainers, like us. As a Poketuber, I can't accept that man, I will hold on to my torch until I'm dead in the dirt. We then get introduced to Aquila Altair, the Pokemon League's director. And thanks to the champion having just vouched for us, he quickly processes our registration into the league and at long last... And we're immediately thrown into a tutorial battle against the director himself. Yo! That is such a cool Pokemon. Ooh, that's new. Let's flux it up with the Speed Bash. FP 3 to 1? I have no idea what's going on. Thankfully, my future self understands this new mechanic a lot better. So to put it simply, Flux moves combine two attacks into one. In this case, Speed Bash raises our dolphin speed by one stage, then attacks with physical normal type damage all in the same turn. But Altair shows off another possible combination, summoning electric terrain in the first half of his Flux move, then unleashing a water type special move in the second. Instead of PP, Flux moves use a separate resource called Flux Points. And right now we only have enough to use one Flux move per battle, but as we progress through the game, we'll unlock more Flux Points and moves to mix and match. Wait, this thing's using bubble. Oh my God, fish food is gonna die. Fish food is literally about to become fish food. No! Altair's Pokemon is a water electric type, which makes it kind of a pain for my team to take down since we don't have anything super effective. But eventually Echo knocks it out and we get to continue our adventure. And we get Aqua Jet. Nice. I'll take that. Altair recommends we head north to take on the tourney in Rooktown. And yes, you heard me right. Tournament, not Pokemon Gym. Though I seem to miss this little detail. It's gotta be like any other Pokemon League, right? Before moving on though, I decide to chat with some of the locals around here and end up getting gifted a whole bunch of Flux moves for free. Too bad none of my Pokemon can use them. And just when I'm ready to continue our adventure, we get stopped by this guy. So he can introduce us to his flying turtle? It's basically the flying taxi from Galar, which we can use to fly anytime, anywhere. Surely now we can go on to the Gull Coast, right? You gotta be kidding me. I'm only allowed to let you through if you're an official trainer with the league. Yeah, bro, we got our flux band or whatever it's called. Which means now we can go on to the Gold Coast. Oh my god, look at the skid Wait, is that a regional form Nidoran? You guys know I'm a sucker for regional forms. I mean, Ninetales, Alola Ninetales is one of my favorite Pokemon. And we in fact do have 
a regional form for Nidoran, which looks like it might be ground and ice type. Once again, my deduction skills were on point, and without hesitation, I decide to add Icy onto the team. But there's actually another new Pokemon here. I don't think I've ever seen Rodillo. Oh my gosh, an Armadillo Pokemon? Another one that I'm surprised they haven't done officially. Then again, I forgot there is an official Dolphin Pokemon. Maybe I'm forgetting if there's an Armadillo. Earlier, I mentioned how this game describes its routes as wild area-like. And Gold Coast is where we get to see this fully realized, with multiple branching paths that lead to different landmarks, like these massive windmills or a scenic stroll by the beach. There are of course tons of trainers spread all about, and many wild Pokemon to catch, but none that really called out to me. Until... Yo! It's our first, uh, what are they called? Alter Pokemon? And it's an Orby, so I think maybe we can put Briar up first, since, uh, you know, poison is good against grass. Oh, the music is different too! We got the Altered Humborn! Oh, it's a 2v1! Okay! Oh, he's charging up his own Flux move, okay! Is Fake Out even gonna work against an Altered Pokemon? Nope, it did not work! We got Bright Bash! Oh my gosh! What?! Just instantly double killed? I should have known from the level. Can I even run away? Oh my god, I should have ran away. Thankfully, the game does give us a chance to run. So instead of continuing to suffer against the ultimate angry bird, I decide to head back, heal up, and continue exploring the route. Note to self, do not fight any more altar Pokemon until we at least have some evolutions. Dang, that was seriously out of our league. At night, this route takes on an entirely different vibe, with a few edgy new Pokemon to catch. And since I'm trying to fill up the decks, I decide to look around for a female Nidoran. Oh wait, this is female! What the heck? Maybe when they evolve you can see the difference? All I'ma say is my hunches have been right so far, and thankfully we won't have to wait much longer to see if this one is too, cause we're making our way to Alba Town. Every town so far has had a completely different vibe. This one is definitely more rustic, I guess. It's still huge though, oh my gosh. Wait, is that our rival? Sorry kid, rules are rules. Can't let anyone through without permission from the principal. This lovely melody belongs to Gale. And just like his theme, this kid is quite the earful. He says he'll have to prove himself at the school tournament, which sounds like a good opportunity for us to train as well. But first I decide to have a look around town, and end up finding an elevator that leads down to the beach. Ooh, look at this! It's the Pokemon the director had, right? We got Sletchu! I've been wondering if we were going to see an electric type anytime soon. Finally, looks like we get our chance to catch one. So let's go for the fake out to kick things off. This thing proved to be pretty annoying, just like the first time we battled it. But eventually, come on, stay in there, please. Yes! We got Sletchu! Wait, is this like the Pikachu clone of this game? I guess I wasn't paying attention to the ears behind its weird tentacle things. But you gotta admit, this is probably the weirdest Pika clone of all time. I actually kinda like just the name Sletchu, but just to be extra cute, we'll call it just Chew. And even though we already had a water type, I decided to add Chew onto the team since it was quite difficult to beat both times we faced it. Briar was looking a little shook after that battle, so I head back to the Pokemon Center and after healing up, found an NPC with an interesting proposition. Summer Coat and Winter Coat, huh? If you bring me a summer coat, I can trade you my winter coat. Wait, this is the summer coat? Well, I'm pretty sure trade Pokemon are the same level of the one you give them, so I guess we'll go with Icy? It didn't get to journey with us for very long. And we've got... Oh! That's so different! What the heck? It's got like the opposite pattern. Blue with little brown spots. And it's ice type, I just realized. I thought it was gonna evolve into ice ground. Maybe it still does, but this is awesome. And now it was finally time to check out the school tournament. So we head to the prestigious Alba Academy and notice quite the commotion outside. 
Also, our rival Sky is there, but he's about as helpful as normal types against ghost Pokemon. So we head inside the school, and you. I remember you, outside the woods. You following me? I don't recognize you as a student here. You know what? I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Neither do I, bro. All I care about is this dang school tournament. So after running around the school halls for a while, no running in the halls, whoops. I just run right, oh my god. <laughs> Why did I think that wouldn't work? That actually kind of scared me. We find the school's principal, and he's also totally useless. Ah, marveling at my trophy, yes. I received it for distinguished service in the pursuit of education. I most certainly did not buy it myself from a novelty shop. <laughs> I like that. So I go check on Gale again, and it turns out we had to talk to the referee out on the battlefield to enter the tournament. So now it's actually finally time. At this point, I still wasn't sure if these tournaments would replace the gym challenge entirely, or if this specific one even counts for the Pokemon League. But the Alba Academy tournament kicks off with a battle against Antony. Come on, bro, just bring me Gale. There's no way we're gonna lose to Antony. And we, in fact, do not lose even a single Pokemon against this little kid. But if you're familiar with any good tournament arc, you'll know the opponents only get tougher the further you go. And next up, we have another little kid. Come on. Needless to say, we absolutely destroy Judy, but the third trainer actually looks a bit tougher with a Sluchu on her team. And you know how we've been struggling against those earlier. Oh my god, <laughs> the irony of sending in fish food against two fishy Pokemon. This might not end well. No! Why'd you go for fish food? Come on. All right, well, he's still alive. And okay, we don't quite kill him. Hopefully, yes. It goes Electro Web. And though it took a very, very long time, at this point, I'm a bit of a sea slug killing connoisseur. Come on, Aqua Jet. Crit something. Oh, we did get a crit. Yo, let's go. Don't quite get level 16 yet, but hey, I guess in our battle against Gale, it's going to be a climactic finish. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! Gale kicks things off with another Pokemon we've yet to see and an instant flux move out of his Tanupi. Or is it? Oh, wait, what? Yo, is that a fire type? Nope. Unlike Hisui and Zorua, this one is just pure ghost type, which means it unfortunately resists our poison flux move. But earlier, I actually upgraded our flux bracer so we can use two flux moves per battle now. But being a ghost type, Zorua still manages to survive. All right, Echo, you're going to have to earn this evolution, bro. So finish it off with the Aqua Jet. Nice. And there we go. We beat Gale. That was actually easier than the previous battle. I'm a little confused. Oh, come on. No, please. No. Did the game just crash? 12 seconds later. I knew there was something up with the slowdown. Oh, wait a minute. It's not even Echo. We got Orby evolving. That is the last thing I was expecting. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. Oh, that is so awesome. We've got Navibri. That sounds like something out of Avatar. Like the blue people, not the last airbender. The Navigator Pokemon. It's actually still flying normal type. And we get Wing Attack. Nice. I can tell the game is still lagging a little bit though, so I'm a bit worried about that. Uh, I'm definitely gonna save after this. Double evolution, let's go. I was a little worried for a second, not gonna lie, that maybe Echo didn't evolve yet, but yo, that is so awesome. We got Del Fender. Does that mean he's more like on the tanky side? The purple, Pool floaties kind of make me think it might become water poison, but at least for now, it's still just pure water. This is the first time I think I might like the middle stage of a uh, starter more than the first. That is such a cool design. For winning the school tournament, we get the HM for cut. Or should I say HFM? It's basically the same thing, but doesn't take up a move slot, which is quite nice. Gale then drags us back to his dorm room and gives us an unexpected confession. To be honest, I kind of hate you. What? What the frick did I do to you, bro? 
Understandably, he's not too happy with his defeat, but admits he needs our help to save his friend who seems to be lost in the woods. And that's where I was originally going to end this video. But now that some of our Pokemon have evolved, it feels like the perfect opportunity to get some revenge. Come here, you stupid bird. <laughs> I am way too excited about killing this thing. Double flux attack. Oh my god, here comes his though. And we tank it easy. Levels really are OP. Honestly, we did not even need Rock Tube, but hey, at least we still used it. And now we can toss our Pokeball. And we did it. Sweet, sweet revenge is mine. <laughs> Now this time for real, we're gonna wrap up the first episode of Pokemon Flux. I mean, my first episode, because as far as the game's first chapter goes, we're only about halfway through, and from what I've seen, it just keeps getting better. So make sure to hit that like button if you guys enjoyed and want to see more of Pokemon Flux. There's no official release for the second episode yet, but there are plenty of other fan games out there that I've yet to play. So if you have any suggestions for which one I should check out next, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.